All right, Wolf Pack Thursday partner conditioning. Okay, this is our third to last. One, two, three. Yep, third to last uh, week to show up and win a $50 gift card. Um, we will, or the whole thing will commence or end um, at the end of the year. So, you got three more weeks. Get your butt in. Get some Thursday conditioning in. Great did a uh, great way to break up the week. You can get a ton of cardiac benefit from this, and it's going to improve your CrossFit um, a lot without you really even doing CrossFit. And that's the beauty of it. Um, plus, it's nice to get a nice little sweat and not have to, you know, worry about barbells or lifting heavy weights. Okay. Um, so with a partner, this one's a little bit um, intense. Okay. It was kind of tough to determine the time domain that I wanted to make this. Um, set or the AMRAP portion just because you know everybody's different at running speeds and, and rowing speeds and all of that good stuff so we're gonna go over the workout um, kind of over the time domains that we should be sticking around and then we want to have at least a couple minutes here on the machines at the end so you got you and your partner can pick and choose right the run distance the calories on the machine um, to make sure that you're getting to the assault bike and the skier with enough time to do a couple switches get some work on both machines um, and then obviously get the most calories possible since that will be your score. So this is three sets. It's an 11 minute AMRAP. I don't know if I've ever programmed an 11 minute AMRAP. It feels super weird, um, but it really, really fits a pretty good time domain um, for these movements and, 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 and these machines. So uh, bear with me as we go through this. You do get a two minute rest at the end, which means that we should be pushing pretty intensely since you get a decent little rest chunk, but um, you are gonna be working a lot of the time, pretty much most of the time in this AMRAP. So you have to take that into account on your run speed, your row pace. Um, that way we can get to the calories again as fast as we can. Um, but not that we're completely smoked. So three, two, one, go. Excuse me. Uh, 400 meter run, you will both complete. You do not have to run together. You just both have to complete the distance. And we need to make sure that this run that we choose, we can do in two and a half minutes or less. Um, I would aim for faster in the beginning rounds because uh, obviously with the fatigue moving through this entire uh, AMRAP, Towards the last couple of rounds, you can have less and less time on the bike and the ski at the end. So if we can run a little bit faster, bank a little bit more time on the backside, obviously it's going to give us a chance to get more calories here. So um, two to two and a half minutes maximum. So if we need to bring the run down just a little bit, it's totally fine. Or if you got a watch and you know this is going to be challenging for us, just run, you know, a minute 15 out or a minute 10, minute 15 out, and then turn back around. Um, that way you're coming in at that like 220, 230 marker. Okay. So run. Uh, one person will be working on the rower, so you split the calories as needed. This is a good opportunity to get a little bit of rest and push the calories a little bit faster than you normally would if you weren't uh, resting while your partner was working. So whoever comes in first, start knocking out some calories, and then you guys are just going to switch off. Male, male is going to be 100. Uh, female, female, 80. Co-ed will be 90. Once you've completed the calories on the rower, um, you're going to both run a 200 meter run. And then when you come back in, the remaining time is going to be the bike and the skier going at the same time. One on the bike, one on the ski erg, and then just switch however you see fit, however you need for the remainder of the time. Okay, rest two minutes, and then we're going to repeat. So, again, we want to have at least two minutes here on the, on the bike. So if we're um, if we're over exaggerating the time domains, right, or we're, or we're pushing them towards the toward, towards the the max time we want to spend on these movements, right, two and a half minutes on the run, uh, five and a half minutes on the rower puts you at what eight minutes. Uh, you know, minute, minute and a half on the run, nine minutes, nine and a half minutes, right? That gives you 90 seconds to two minutes on the skier. So um, it seems like you're going to have a lot of time in this, but <clears throat> again, it's a lot of work to get done. And depending on your run speed and your row speed, right, it can either take, you know, less or potentially more. So here's my uh, time domain stickage, right? If you're not two and a half minutes here, if you're not off the rower by eight, um, I think you guys should just get off and finish the run. And then come in from the run. That way we have at least ample time to get a couple switches on the machines. Because most people are probably going to switch every every 30 seconds or something like that. Um, depending on how much you want to transition. Right? Rest two minutes and do it again. Um, you should be able to row a little faster than normal though. Because you will be getting a little bit of rest. So just keep that in mind. Other than that, pretty straightforward. Great conditioning workout. i um, super excited to see people uh, complete this. I think it kind of encompasses everything we've been doing in the last, I don't know, however long we've been doing these Thursday partner wads. Six years. So... Have a great Thursday. See you in the gym. Later.